Welcome back to The Messy Farm, a four-part series on regenerative agriculture. Today, we're diving into the fascinating and complex world of pollinators. Much of the food we eat is dependent on pollinators, and here at Messy Farm, our apples, pears, apricots, and plums all rely on pollinators to maximise the yield of fruit. Without pollinators, yield of our fruit trees would drop by 90%. Pollinators are vital for plant health and biodiversity, ensuring the reproduction of many crops and wild plants. By supporting pollinators, farms can enhance biodiversity, boost crop yields and create a more resilient and healthy agricultural ecosystem. It isn't just fruit trees that rely on pollinators. Our native wildflowers and trees also rely on them, from stingless bees, to butterflies, moths, hoverflies, and megabats. When most people think of pollinators and farms, bees usually come to mind, and specifically the European honeybee. Here at Messy Farm, we have six hives that are stationed year round. So some of the work that we've done so far has been doing fauna surveys and insect surveys, as well as soil tests. And some of the challenges that we've got around improving the biodiversity from what we've identified so far is being able to move away from more traditional agricultural methods using insecticides and herbicides in particular and creating a system where we utilise the weeds that are on the site or identify weaknesses within pest species that are coming to uh, feed on our produce and using natural ways of being able to control them. Messing's farm is divided into three parts, orchard, pasture, and natural bush. The natural bush set aside in the middle of the property, providing an abundance of habitat for insects and bird species to migrate to. And the insects and the birds are able to move from that and feed on the pest species within the other parts of the farm. Some of those insects also come into our orchard for nectar. And as they do so, they spread pollen, which fertilizes the flowers and gives us our amazing fruit. We'd like to be able to put nest boxes throughout our forest, in particular micro bat boxes to increase the bat population here, which feed on insects. And so by maintaining apex predators like a, a bat for an insect population, it increases the biodiversity of the insects that, that we've got here. And part of that process is also using animals like chickens through chicken tractors to encourage a different biodiversity in the insect life in the, the ground layer. We rely on expert advice to inform us and how we manage our European honeybees. And one of those experts is Carl Hampson. In terms of the biodiversity of this area, how bees help, we bring bees to this area to pollinate plants that might not be so effectively pollinated by wind pollination, and therefore increasing the density of trees and weeds and plants in the area and the diversity. And the fact that most of our food that we put in our mouth is from European origins, and it's a European honeybee, there's a symbiotic relationship there. They're a very, very effective pollinator. One third of the food that we eat in Australia needs a honeybee to pollinate it at some point in the process. So it's a vitally important insect for the food supply that we have. The three biggest threats to honeybees in Australia, the first one people don't think about, it's imported honey. The size of our industry and the profitability of our industry, the number of people that can afford to keep bees is being suppressed by imported and fake honey coming into the country. If we disappear, there's a lot of industries that are not gonna exist. The second most important one for the beekeeping industry is pesticide use. We've got sites and farms that are wary of this. We work on regen ag properties, both cattle and some cropping properties, um, where they understand these principles and they're moving towards soil health. I hear story after story of guys losing loads of bees, hundreds of hives dying, being sprayed by the neighbor of the farm that they're on. Bees are one of the only ag spaces where your problem becomes someone else's problem. Cattle, there's a fence. Bees don't see fences. 
And the third most important thing I see is being able to access more country. The richest soils that we have in southeast Queensland are being built on. All our tea tree swamps are being filled in. All that winter forage that we used to work is now being clawed back and turned into units. Bees are, are increasing the biodiversity in a certain area due to the pollination. Even though things might be wind pollinated, having a bee on it increases the seed set on, on that tree. And that increases the density of plants in that area and the diversity of plants. That in turn increases the carbon going into the ground through the root systems. As a, a beekeeping family, we can see the vast differences between two farming styles, regen, ag and what we call degenerative agriculture. It's clear as day when you walk onto a property which side of the fence they stand on things. The average person, if they wanted to make a difference, lawn and hedges are generally not the best thing to be planning out if you're planning a property. Diversity. Diversity of things are going to produce both pollen and nectar and if you can afford to have your grass grow the amount of Cool things that come out of your lawn, if you just leave it alone for a beehive is unbelievable. And if we can see it in honeybees, it's happening to all the pollinators. It's just taking that first step in faith that there is a better way. I'm really excited to see where the region egg space is gonna go. Back at the messy farm, we're at the tail end of spring where the honeybees are very active. While European bees are important for crop pollinators and produce delicious honey, they aren't the only pollinators we host here at the Messy Farm. We aim to support all pollinators, which have an important role to play in our farm's ecosystem, and also in the First Nations culture in Australia. Stingless bees are important to the Camberwell people of the Granite Belt, where our produce is grown, and the Kumbumeri people of the Gold Coast, where some of our produce is sold. The cultural significance of native pollinators is that all culture revolves around the keystone species. They are where our culture is derived from. We observed everything they did and found a way to bring out tool making, our dancing, our ceremonies, our gene pool diversification, our skin law, everything. We, we have all that knowledge is from the bees. They're part of our story. They're part of our culture. They're part of our origin. And we have a responsibility to make sure that we don't lose any species of native bee. We've, we're the number one country in the world for mammal extinction and the fourth country in the world for all other plant and animal extinction. We lose them, we lose whole ecosystems, whole ecologies. We can't have that. That's a crime. That's a crime against nature, humanity, and its life in general. Connection, it's in here, it's in your, in your dougal, in your heart. And with your chinungs, your bilungs, your listening, your feet, connection is not just for Aboriginal people. It's also, I find, and I've, I found this in my walk, there's people here that I've met that have connection that can't be denied. They have it here, they have it here, and they hear and they know things that there's an understanding and a wisdom that just vibrates with them. You improve your connection as a farmer by observing the nature that we have here, all the natives, all the diversity, everything that's here, we can use that. We don't have to reinvent the wheel and start terraforming the place because this place had everything and there's modern things now that, you know, you don't want to just go back to living like the old people, but you want to bring the best of what they had into what you've got farmers that are interested in how they can get involved by keeping native bees is by creating ecosystems for the bees, the flowers they like, the ground cover they like. They love blue and white flowers, they love natives. They don't require much. You can keep them in a log, they love logs. You don't want to spray around bees. If you're going to clear the weeds, put something in to replace them. All little flowers are, are, are gems to, to bees. And if you bring the bees, the rest will come, the animals, the wildlife, the birds, but also the best yield you'll get if you grow on crops, you get better yields on all types of things, zucchinis, watermelons, macadamias, you name it, you're going to get a better yield. The easiest hobby, the easiest pet you ever had, and they're your little mates. That's the best thing about them, they're your little mates. By supporting a range of pollinators here at Messy Farm, 
we're not only looking after the farm itself and biodiversity, but we're also keeping the biocultural values of the landscape alive. In our next instalment, we're showcasing the harvesting of produce and where regenerative agriculture produce is sold 